traveler. Paimon, it's been a long time. Oh, hey, Hoishin. Long time to see. Fancy meeting you here. How's work these days? Thanks to the help of people like you and colleagues like Ganyu, better all the time. But I've been feeling distracted at work lately. I just feel constantly agitated. <sighs> it's a long story. But my father, he's thinking of stepping down from the Tianshu position due to health issues. Huh? What's wrong with Uncle Tian? Nothing specifically. He's not unwell. He says he's just increasingly low on energy these days. He's always said old age comes for us all in the end. Still, I just can't help but feel a little emotional watching it happen to him. Anyway, my father's currently on the second floor of Yangcheng Tea House. Why don't you come pay him a visit with me? He seems very fond of you, too. I'm sure chatting with you will make him very happy. Sure, let's go! What a lovely surprise. Welcome. Hoishi, why don't you go downstairs and get the shopkeeper to make us a fresh pot of tea? I heard that you've been traveling all over the place recently. I would very much like to hear your adventure stories. Hoishi told you, didn't she? Don't worry, I'm quite all right. It's just the years gradually catching up with me. As I grow older, I'm starting to find that with many things, though the mind is willing, the flesh is weak. Especially recently, I've noticed a rather drastic drop in my energy levels. I am still very much in good standing as the Tianshu today. Nevertheless, I wish to pass on the position before my mental acuity begins to decline beyond redemption. How difficult is it to transfer the Tianshu position? Oh, well, you see, the Tianshu is a rather unique position among the Liu Qixing. Historically speaking, the Tianshu rarely appears in public. We stay behind the scenes, planning and giving advice. So a public selection process would not be suitable. We also want to keep any prospective Tianshu candidates free from influence by outside forces. So we tend to be as discreet as possible in their assessment and appointment. For these reasons, the incumbent Tianshu typically recommends their candidate of choice, and this is then approved by the other Qixing members. So in other words, you pick someone, and then Lady Keqing, Lady Ningguang, and the other Qixing appoint them? Correct. Unfortunately, due to my health, I won't be able to assess every candidate myself. Not to despair, however, because I found someone exceptionally capable to act on my behalf as assessment officer. <laughs> In fact, I believe you recently became acquainted with her yourself. Oh? Who is it? I'm heartbroken. I thought it might take you a little longer than this to forget all about me. Jackpot. Uncle Tian here asked me to assess three candidates for him. Fancy joining me? You'll be among the first to get to know the next Tianshu. Might be a good opportunity for you. Hmm. What do you think? Paimon thinks so too. It can't be a bad thing to be on good terms with 
the new Qixing, right? All right then. Though, I gotta say, Uncle Tian, you say you're into behind-the-scenes planning? My work's of the covert variety, too. Don't you think I might make a good Tian Shu? Huh? Yeon, you want to be the next Tian Shu? Hmm, I'm not opposed to the idea. But I suspect Ningguang wouldn't let you go very easily after how long you've been working together. So, how about this? If your investigation reveals that none of the other candidates are qualified for the position, I'll recommend you for the job. Deal. Well, you guys take your time. Everything's all set for the assessments to go ahead. Meet me on the first floor when you're ready. Until then, have a pleasant conversation. Oh, and no need to pay for your tea. As the new owner of this fine establishment, this runs on the house. You're all set? Uncle Tian seems really worn down. It's like all his energy's gone. Yeah, it may sound harsh, but Uncle Tian is past his prime. He's not cut out for this anymore. So he's recommended three candidates. Their names are Qin Wei, Ming Bo, and Zhu Yi. Qin Wei is a wealthy entrepreneur. Ming Bo works at the Liu Wei Ministry of Civil Affairs, and Zhu Yi is focused on study and travel. Try to keep all that in mind. <laughs> of course, it doesn't really matter if you forget, since we'll be assessing them at Yue High Pavilion in a short while. Qin Wei, Ming Bo, Zhu Yi. Paimon should be able to remember their names, but what does the assessment involve exactly? Let's leave that until we get to Yue High Pavilion. All right. Heads in the game, people. The stakes don't get much higher than a change in the Qixing. We can't afford to miss anything, no matter how small. Got it. We'll keep our eyes wide open. My legs are getting sore. What is wrong with this assessment officer? This is a huge occasion and I don't even get a chair. I've dealt with all kinds of people in my time, but never have I been made to stand while I'm waiting for an appointment. Oh, I mean, uh, I, I think it's fine. That's called being complacent. If you're happy to just accept the way things are, you'll never be able to change anything in the future. Oh, come on. That's just... Now you're just... being unreasonable. All right, you two. Let's not get into a big argument over this. It's not worth it. Qian Wei, that was a bit uncalled for. And Ming Bo cut him some slack. We've all been standing around for a while. It's natural to be getting irritable. Look, how about this? There's no rule saying we're obliged to stand up while we wait, so why don't we borrow some chairs from the guild nearby? Fine. Ugh, they're not the best quality chairs, to be sure. But under the circumstances, it would be better than nothing. It looks like all three candidates have arrived. Mm-hmm. We'll meet them formally soon. Before that, let me run you through the assessment process. I've split it into two stages, current affairs and planning, and face-to-face -face interview. In the first stage, candidates are required to submit a manifesto for Liyue's development. In the second stage, we will ask them some questions in person. Writing a manifesto takes time, so I informed them of this requirement in advance. These are the reports they submitted. Wow, one of them is really thick! It's also worth mentioning a stipulation I gave them. Whoever is appointed as the new Tianshu will be expected to implement their plan as put forward in their manifesto. Failing the occurrence of some cataclysmic event, they will not be permitted to change their plan. Therefore, these three piles of documents in front of us represent where each candidate stands on key policy issues. There's still some time. Have a skim through, get a first impression of what each person's proposing. I'll be waiting off to the side. Just let me know when you're done.
Finished, huh? What did you think? Everyone took it very seriously. Of course they did. They have the chance to be picked as the new Tianshu, so you can bet they're putting their best foot forward. And keep in mind, whoever gets in has to execute their plan as written. Nobody wants to have any regrets. <laughs> That's for me to know and you to find out. We can talk more after the interviews. We'll see the candidates now. Let's do one at a time. Start with Chen Wei. Yes, ma'am. Oh? So you two are the assessment officers, are you? I had assumed that given the great import of this situation, Lady Ningguang would perhaps be assessing us in person. I certainly hadn't imagined I'd be seeing two entirely unfamiliar faces. I trust you've read through my manifesto? I'd be more than happy to clarify any details you found difficult to grasp. It was written with an expert audience in mind, after all. Mind your tone, mister! Relax. It wasn't intended as a personal slight against anyone in particular. I was simply stating a fact. Cloud Retainer? You know this Adeptus? Oh, yes, I remember now. You must be the traveler that people are constantly talking about. With your sterling reputation, you must have a respectable level of erudition. Perhaps you will be able to understand the concepts I have put forward. Yeah, although I shouldn't get my hopes up. Oh, is it my turn? Yes. Please, introduce yourself. I'm, uh, Mingbo. I work in the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I've worked there for, um, nine years, five months, and three days. In that time, I've handled, uh... 2,347 cases. I have 12 active cases at the moment. They should be concluded in, uh, 16 days? My current work is related to urban planning, and I'm also responsible for, uh, auditing the accounts. To be more precise, there are three parts to the accounts, namely... Uh, is it just Paimon, or is he not very good at public speaking? You know what? Let's leave the self-introduction there and move on to some questions. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little nervous. What would you like to know? You're here to assess me, so ask away and I'll answer your questions to the best of my ability. Your manifesto is very wide in its scope, but you don't seem to be personally involved in many of the specific fields. How can you be sure that you have the ability to put your plan into action? Very fair question. I completely understand where you're coming from. But I'm confident in my plan. I've visited many different places, talked to lots of people with far more expertise than myself, and my manifesto is the conclusion of these efforts. Of course, Two different problems can be interconnected in very complicated ways, and you might reach two very contradictory conclusions depending on which one you're focusing on. What I've tried to do is strike a balance. In other words, present an optimal solution to all the problems as a whole. How do you plan to determine whether you are right or wrong about your proposed solution being the optimal one? A great question. Well. I'd start by having my colleagues and the secretaries of the Yue Hai Pavilion evaluate any proposals before implementation. Post-implementation, it would all come down to the results. If it turned out that my judgment was to blame for poor results, I would take responsibility. Hmm. Nice answer. All right, next question. He seems like a great guy. Everything he said was thoughtful and logical, and he was just a pleasure to listen to. Here's my take on what we just learned. As you saw, Chen Wei is highly knowledgeable. He proposes many excellent ideas in his manifesto, which effectively target the big issues. 
But he is very proud and incredibly stubborn. He doesn't care much about other people's feelings. Mingbo's plan is more thorough and more measured. You can tell he's meticulous in his work, very detail-oriented. But he and Shenwei are otherwise polar opposites. Mingbo is not very articulate and comes across as very timid in conversation. Perfect summary! Paimon couldn't agree more! You're good at this, Yewan. Last but not least, Jur Yi. His manifesto is full of pertinent details, his methodology is sound, and his proposals cover a broad range of fields, which is quite a rare feat. The depth he goes into in each and every area means it can only be a product of painstaking work. Plus, he is modest and good at dealing with people. But, what really interests me is that many of his views happen to coincide with Uncle Tien's. Having someone like Jur Yi take the position would certainly put Uncle Tien's mind at rest. Great! We'll see. Let's go back and report to Uncle Tien. I see. Then it's more or less as I anticipated. All right. Then let me ask this. The ideas in Jur Yi's manifesto are very similar to your own. Is there any particular reason behind this? Oh. I didn't want to say anything when I gave you the list of candidates. For fear of affecting your judgment. But I can tell you now. Those three candidates have all studied under me in the past. It's only natural that they share some similarities with me. But Xin Wei went on to focus on his business, and Ming Guo has always been occupied with his work at the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Of all of them, Jerry was with me for the longest duration. You get to know them all, Uncle Tian. Chen Wei was referred to me by an old friend. Ming Guo came to my attention in the course of my work. <laughs> As for Jerry, that <laughs> uh, was pure happenstance. We first met while fishing. Gradually, as we got to know each other, we started discussing all sorts of topics. Jerry came from a poor family and his parents died when he was very young. But he was a gifted student and a fast learner. He reminded me of a younger version of myself. So I started out giving him a few words of advice when we were out fishing and noticed how quickly he got on. Quite. And now, all of a sudden, he's grown into a mature young man. It's a joy to see, but it also gets one thinking. The young are growing up, and I am growing old. How time flies. No one can escape the cycle of life. I don't know, Uncle Tian. You still seem in pretty good shape to me. You might have another few years of work left in you, don't you think? Oh, you. <laughs> There's really no need to console me. Having less energy than I used to isn't a, such a bad thing. It just means I finally have a good reason to retire and spend my days doing what old men like me should be doing. Going fishing whenever I feel like it. Sounds like you sure love fishing, Uncle Tian. Ooh, there's nothing quite like fishing to pass the time. Ooh, and freshly caught fish? Da, they make the most beautiful fish soup with barely any preparation required. Fresh fish soup? Mmm, sounds tasty! Doesn't it? <laughs> also, some time ago, Jury purchased a very special recipe from an old fisherman. When we've been fishing recently, 
Jerry always brings some extra ingredients he prepared in advance. Oh, the addition of these makes the soup taste even more wonderful. That flavor makes for a fond memory. But at my age, who knows how many more chances I have left to taste it again. Oh, can Paimon come next time too? Paimon really wants to try it. Let's get back to the matter at hand. Uncle Tian, we've reported back. Do you have a verdict? Mm-hmm. I appointed you as the assessment officer, and I trust your judgment. Had you not asked me why Jury's ideas were so similar to mine, I was not going to mention my history with any of them. This decision must be guided by what is fair and right. Please disregard all other considerations and make your final decision only after a thorough review of each candidate's talents and capabilities. Remember, you must be thorough. Understood. Come on, let's go talk somewhere else. Bye-bye, Uncle Tian. Look after yourself. right? His manifesto was written well, and he's the best speaker. Easy. Let's not rush. There's no time limit for this assessment. Huh? So, are you gonna give them more tests or something? No, nothing like that. The assessment itself is complete. But let me give you a word of advice. Things are not always as they appear. The biggest no-no in intelligence work is to only get information from the person of interest themselves. The truth is almost always hidden beneath many layers of deception. You have to get information through many different channels. For example... Wen Yuan, Shanghua. Yes? Lady Yelan, what are your orders? Ugh! Who are they? Where did they come from? Did they scare you? These two are Wen Yun and Shang Hua. They work for me. As my trusted assistants, they are always standing guard nearby. They also perform various assignments as required. Shang Hua is a business expert who gets his information by trading. Wen Yun relies on word of mouth. And there's also Wu Pei, who's not here right now. That meathead must have been out there on sea surveillance for some time now. Is he all right? I seem to remember that he can't swim. <sighs> Nothing can take that guy down. Certainly not a little wind and waves. Shenghua, visit all the commerce guilds and look into Qianwei's background. Wen Yuan, go to the Ministry of Civil Affairs and look through Mingbo's work files. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma um, so what about Zhi Yi? Zhi Yi, well, obviously as the most promising candidate. We will be investigating him ourselves. Let's go to the docks first. Lots of people passing through there. You can find out all kinds of things. If we're looking for information, why don't we try talking to Bu Lai, the owner of Wanyu Boutique? He does business at the North Wharf. Maybe he has some news for us. Hmm. That's actually not a bad idea. Let's go and ask him. Look, your asking price for this batch is just too high. I can't buy in at this price. How am I supposed to turn a profit? Come on, hear me out. I'm telling you, this is the single best batch of Sunsetias ever. You won't find anyone who disputes that. I accidentally dropped one into a well, and even the water turned sweet. Even so... <laughs> all right, all right. I'll let you in on a little secret. The boss of Second Life also wants to buy from me, but I haven't responded yet. If you won't take him, I'll just have to partner with them instead. And neither of us wants that. <laughs> okay. Well, when you put it that way, I'll accept your asking price. I'll take all your stock. Don't sell a single one to Second Life.
Oh, what are you doing here? And to be clear, these Sunsetias are mine. I got to them first. Don't get any ideas. Actually, we want to ask you about a guy called Jury. Have you heard of him before? Jury? Yes, he's quite well known. I've heard a story about him. They say he was born into poverty. His parents died when he was young, and he was treated cruelly by the local community. One of his neighbors was terribly rude to him all the time, but Jury never retaliated. And when his neighbor went bankrupt, he even helped support the family. He returned cruelty with kindness, oh, injustice with peace offerings, a gentleman of talent and character, and... Uh, oh, how did I not notice him sooner? In fact, maybe I'm not too late. If I could hire him to be the brand ambassador for Wanyo Boutique... Oh, he sounds like a decent man. We can finally breathe a sigh of relief. Why are you asking about him anyway? Uh, you aren't uh, looking for a brand ambassador too, are you? Well then, in that case, the higher bidder takes the... Hmm? Ah, that's Jury right over there. Why don't we go and talk to him? Where? Where? It's him, all right. Looks like he's chatting with Lin Long. Come on, let's follow them and listen in. Try not to let him see you. We want this information to be as truthful as possible. I'll just go and fetch an employment contract. And hey, don't try and cut me out of this. Hey! My. Try not to let him see you. We want this information to be as truthful as possible. I understand. Let's walk and talk. You were looking to buy a wineware set? Oh, now I can see that you're a connoisseur, so I won't bother trying to con you. I trust you understand our shop quite well? The truth is, an old friend of mine, who likes to have a drink now and then... He fancies himself as a man of culture, but doesn't care for needless extravagance. So I thought I might buy him a set of high-quality fakes. How very thoughtful of you. Leave it to me, then. Come and collect it at Shigu Antiques whenever is convenient. Thank you very much, Miss Linlong. It's my pleasure, Mr. Jiri. These days, it's quite rare for someone of your standing to still keep up with their old friends. It's nice to see. I'll be sure to pick out a good set for you. You can count on me. Hmm. Jerry seems to get along really well with everyone. Are you satisfied now, Yelan? Seems like everyone thinks Jerry's a great guy. We shouldn't jump to conclusions just yet. Let's go check out the wharf where he usually goes fishing. Ugh. Do we have to? Wait, you're not just trying to dig up some dirt on Juri because you want to be Tianchu yourself, are you? Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. But hey, if I do become Tianchu, I'll look out for you guys. You'll be able to try all the finest food for free. How does that sound? We will? Well, come on! Off to the South Wharf we go! The wharf is as busy as ever. I hear the anglers here sometimes sell their fish to the nearby fishmongers. Hmm. Let's see what Uncle Soon has to say. Welcome. What would you like to buy today? Sorry to interrupt. We're actually members of the, uh, Liyue Anglers Association, and we just wanted to ask a few questions about someone. 
We've heard about this young man called Jur'i, who's supposed to be a fantastic fisherman. Just wondering if you happen to have heard of him? Whoa! Yelan made up a whole fake identity! Without batting an eyelid! Ah, yes, Jur'i. He's been making quite a name for himself recently. I've got some friends who travel all over the place, and they tell me everywhere they go they meet someone who's heard of him. Hmm, apparently, he had a rather tough time growing up. Had to work several jobs alongside his studies to make ends meet. How does that saying go? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, if there's anything to that logic, he's sure to be phenomenally successful one day. Yeah, we think so too. But I'm afraid your Anglers Association might be in for a disappointment. Oh? Huh? Why is that? He's good at a lot of things, but fishing isn't one of them. He fishes at the wharf and sells what he catches to me on occasion. His catches are always mediocre. Not terrible, but equally nothing to write home about. If you're looking to recruit some new members, though, I do know a few top anglers I could put you in touch with. That sounds fantastic. I've got a couple of other things to attend to right now, though, so why don't I come back some other time and we can chat over a drink? Sure thing. See you. Everywhere they go, they meet someone who's heard of him. Hmm. Come on, let's keep asking around. Here to buy some fish? It's 300 for one or three for 1,000. You better hurry. When they're gone, they're gone. Hello, we're from the Society for Fish Price Research. We'd just like to ask a few questions. Wow, she switched identity again. Society for Fish Price Research? Uh, I haven't done anything illegal. Stay out of my business. Please, don't worry. We're just here to conduct a simple survey. We've heard about a certain Jur E who's been selling fresh fish at low prices in this area recently. Do you know anything about this? So this isn't about me. You should have said something, you know. I know the guy. I can tell you what I know. I haven't heard anything about him selling fresh fish at low prices, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was him. Oh? Why is that? Because he's so poor. His parents died when he was a very young, and his alcoholic father still owed a huge amount of debt. No one wanted anything to do with him. He was still a kid when he first came to the wharf. His clothes were ragged, and he had a bandage wrapped around his head. And he managed to survive, thanks to Uncle Tien, who gave him some food. But still to this day, he doesn't have a lot of mora to his name. I mean, he can afford to eat and everything, but... You'll often see him haggling with others over just a few mora, so I wouldn't be surprised to find out he's been selling a few fish. It's not like he catches much anyway, so it's not going to affect my business. Uh, uh, don't, don't tell him I said that. You'd rather he didn't know? Well, I spoke to him once briefly, and I just had a feeling that he really cares what other people think of him. I think he has pretty low self-esteem, but hey, it's hardly my place to say anything. What he's achieved already puts most people to shame. But nobody's perfect. I just wouldn't want to upset him. That's all. I see. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Not a problem. And just for the record, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the price of my fish. The more times you say it, the less convincing it becomes. Hmm. Doesn't have a lot of mora to his name. Okay, let's keep going. Hey, it's you guys! Wait, what's the phrase? Oh yeah, honored to meet you. What brings you to me? The truth is, we are but newcomers to this territory. We heard tell of a great martial artist, Master Dugu, who knows everything there is to know. Hence, we sought you out to ask for your guidance. <gasps> really? People said I know everything there is to know? But of course. 
We also heard that Master Dugu is a kind and virtuous swordsman who never turns away anyone who comes with questions. Great! <clears throat> so what do you wish to know? Nothing happens on this street that I don't know about. Huh? Now she's lying to a kid. So, Master Dugu, have you heard of one by the name of jur -E? Sure have. You mean that guy that all the grown-ups are talking about these days? I've heard many tales of Jury. For example, um, uh, I can't remember. Probably because it's nothing that important. I prefer stories about sword-fighting heroes. Oh, I can completely understand that. Then let me ask you this. Do you remember roughly when the grown-ups started talking about jur -E? Oh yeah, I know that. It was about two or three months ago. Before that, people always used to talk about jur -E in a kind of nasty tone of voice. But two or three months ago, suddenly everyone started to like him. Sometimes he gives me candies, so I'm glad that people are starting to like him now. Just as I thought. Huh? What do you mean? I mean, just as I thought, Master Dugu is indeed as kind and virtuous as the legends claim. <laughs> I'm not that great. Oh yeah, one other thing. These days, there's a lot of people I've never seen before talking about jury stories in the street. They seem like nice people. Oh, definitely. Great! So next time I see them, I'll say hi. And I guess I can share some of my candies with them, too. Certainly. You can also tell my friend in Yenshang Tea House about what they're up to. I'm sure my friend would also like to say hi to them. Thank you, ma'am! You're welcome. Well then, fare thee well, Master Dugu. Until we meet again! Any of that sound strange to you? Strange? What was strange about it? Jiyi seems to have a great reputation. Uncle Soon and Uncle Gao spoke highly of him, and Dugu Shuo seems to like him too. True. But the issue is, where did his sudden celebrity come from? It almost seems too good to be true. Too good to be true? What do you mean? So he returns cruelty with kindness and had to work to support his studies. These are the kinds of things that make someone well known in their hometown. But Uncle Soon said even his friends who travel far and wide hear about him wherever they go. That's a little over the top if you ask me. Do you remember what Dugu Shuo said about Jur E's stories? Clearly they left him with a good impression of the guy. But beyond that, he wasn't interested in the details. That's the reaction I would expect from any normal person. Plus, there's the fact that all this praise of Jur E has only been happening within the last two or three months. His childhood, his studies, the thing with his neighbor. None of these are recent events. So why are these stories only going around now? When you put it like that, it is kind of strange. Of course, if that's all there was to it, I wouldn't look into it any further. Jur E was born into a poor family. Paying people to get his stories out there is within the rules of the game as far as I'm concerned. The problem is, do you remember what Uncle Gao said about him? He's stayed poor his whole life. Everything he's earned he's either spent on studying, traveling, or paying off debts. I don't think he has the mora to pay for a publicity campaign. Right. And that changes everything. It can mean a powerful faction is trying to gain influence over the Liu at Shixing. That's the worst case scenario. But all too often, the most pessimistic speculation turns out to be closest to the truth. Someone's trying to gain influence over the Qixing? That sounds serious. What should we do? Even if we asked Yi about it, surely there's no way he'd admit it. 
First, we need to find out who's supporting him. Don't worry, I've got a plan. Remember the current affairs and planning stage of the assessment? Since the successful candidate is duty-bound to implement their plan after taking office, their manifesto tells us their stance on key issues. Whoever is secretly helping Jer E must be seeking to benefit from his actions after his appointment. So, we should be able to find some hints in Jer E's manifesto on who we're dealing with. Come on, let's get back to Yenshang Tea House. Jer E's manifesto covers a huge range of topics. Looking for details that don't add up? It'll be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. I'll divide the reports into two piles. You take one, I'll take the other. When we're finished, we'll put our heads together. Officially, the assessment is already over, and I'll be expected to announce the results before long. So we have to get to the bottom of this as quickly as we can. Yikes! We better hurry! Whatever else Uncle Tian might think of Jer E, the fact remains that he's one of his favorite students. Any evidence he's left is not going to be immediately obvious. We'll have to look carefully and think critically. Huh. Even though Yelan took half, this is still a lot to get through. Well, we gotta start somewhere. This reading is giving Paimon a headache. <sighs> Let's take a break. <laughs> uh, looks like I'm the first one back, as usual. Oh, hey! It's one of Yelan's little helpers, Shamua! If you're back, that means... That means you finished investigating Chenwei, right? You betcha. I visited all the commerce guilds and gathered a wealth of information. Every time they asked me to leave, but I always had another trick up my sleeve. Don't drag this out. Just tell us your findings. Yes, Lady Elon. To summarize my findings, most people who've had interactions with Qianwei will start out complaining about how proud and arrogant he is, but then go on to give a generally positive appraisal of him. The young master of the Feiyun Commerce Guild said that Qianwei appears arrogant, but he's very scrupulous in the way he works. Once he signs a contract with somebody, he treats them fairly regardless of their background. Who'd have thought? Is it possible that his reputation is fake? Is there any way you can check the accounts of the businesses under his name? In theory, that should be very difficult. But here's the thing. I asked around and found out that almost all of Qianwei's accounts are open to the public. Where he buys from and sells to should be confidential business information, but he doesn't seem interested in protecting it at all. Chen Wei often sees business opportunities that others don't, but once he's made enough mora off of it, it's like he gets sick of it and releases all of his trade secrets. It's like he wants people to know that they still can't beat him, even if he shares all of his secrets. The fact that someone like that can still make mora is pretty infuriating when you think about it. What a strange guy. It's like, he's not doing business to make Mora, but instead... To validate his theories. No wonder his manifesto contains so many insights. It's all the result of his first-hand experimentation. I'm back! Huh? Ah, uh, how come you're here? Why do you think? Obviously, because I possess superior skills, and am always one step ahead of the competition. Well... When you're the competition, at least. You... 
Ugh, whatever. I'm not getting into an argument with you. If I hadn't had something else to take care of on the way, I would have been back long before you. Lady Yela, I have finished investigating Mingbua. Well, we're all ears. The Ministry of Civil Affairs says that Mingbua struggles to get his words out when he gets nervous, especially when he's chatting with strangers. But after a few days of getting to know him, you can pretty much have a normal conversation with him. On the whole, the feedback from the Ministry of Civil Affairs was very positive. He always considers the things that everyone else overlooks. In your opinion, was the Ministry of Civil Affairs appraisal of Mingbuo at all exaggerated? I don't believe so. Mingbuo is someone who has slowly but surely earned the reputation he has today. According to Miss Yu, the Ministry often gets Mingbuo to take a final look at projects before they're implemented. People feel much more confident in something if it has his stamp of approval. Oh, and also, there was once someone in the ministry who was lying and cheating to try to advance their career. Mingbua gave them the scolding of a lifetime. Apparently, he can be terrifying when he loses his temper. I haven't seen it for myself, though. Whoa, that's hard to imagine. Like I said before, things are not always as they appear. That's what you meant by that. Paimon's starting to get it now. Thank you both. You're free to go now. So, have you finished reading the manifesto? We still have a bit left. <laughs> hmm. I can't see any immediate problems looking at the individual entries. The only one that strikes me as a little unusual is the Chengshu Pool Redevelopment Plan. Chengshu Pool has always been home to many secrets. Plus, Ejdaha once wrought havoc there, so there are even more secrets buried deep underground. At some point, a rumor began to go around that there is great treasure buried beneath Chengshu Pool. A long time ago, with the approval of the Qixing, a mining team conducted an exploratory excavation there. So, did they find any treasure? None. The ruin was completely impenetrable. The only way they could have gotten through the solid rock would have been by blowing it open with a special kind of explosive. The technology wasn't mature enough at that time, so the excavation project was shut down and the treasure became a mere legend. Jur E's manifesto focuses on solving problems, and this treasure hunt seems extremely risky. It seems out of step with the rest of his plans. Still, this one fact alone doesn't tell us much. Everyone wants to get their hands on this treasure. The treasure hoarders, the Fatui, even local Liyue factions. <sighs> Did you find anything? Excavation? Project? Treasure? Did we read anything similar in our half of the manifesto? Oh yeah! Juri said the Blackcliff Forge workers should get right a first refusal if any suitable projects come up! Did he now? Well, that makes everything much clearer. So Juri wants the Blackcliff Forge to excavate the treasure of Qiyunshu Pool. Does that mean the Blackcliff Forge is Juri's secret supporter? No. Not likely. I've looked into the Blackcliff Forge before. They aren't involved with any powerful factions at present. They do possess some specialized explosives, but it would seem more trouble than it's worth to put so many resources into a risky project like this. Still, since the clues are pointing toward the Blackcliff Forge, we should see where they lead. We may well find something new. This is the Black Cliff Forge. Let's look around for clues. What's this? A diary? 
From the back, it looks like a ledger, but it seems they also use it as a site log. We don't know who wrote it, but it's interesting, don't you think? These newcomers, who could have sent them? You think they're suspicious? Yes. Look, it says right there, one of them's already been promoted to team leader. At this rate, by the time the Qingxu Pool redevelopment plan is ready to roll, they'll be the technical backbone of the team. That'll give them the chance to take a lot of liberties. They can copy any secret texts or steal any treasure they find underground. Imagine if we didn't suspect anything. By the time Zhu Yi recommends the Black Cliff Forge for the excavation project, at most we would maybe do a fresh background check on the place. No red flags if all they did was change some key staff. And even if we decided to vet the staff individually, they'd have had more than enough time by then to come up with fake identities. That's the advantage of planning this far in advance. <laughs> it was a clever move. When you put it like that, it all makes sense. If we hadn't found this out, someone else would have stolen the treasure. So, who's really behind all this? That's a question for the newcomers. But let's start with that worker over there for now. Uh, excuse us. We want to ask you about the newcomers. <sighs> you want them to teach you or something? I gotta say, these newcomers are in tip-top shape. Fast learners, too. They're picking up all the skills unbelievably fast. My only complaint is that they're always going out drinking at night, but they never let us join them. I guess they just need some time to adjust. I'm sure we'll get to know each other over time. <laughs> they go out drinking? This area isn't exactly renowned for the nightlife. I'm guessing it's a long trip to the nearest tavern. You got that right. They tell me they go all the way back to Liwe Harbor to drink at Wanmin Restaurant. It rained after work today, so they actually stuck around at the site for a while. But as soon as the rain stopped, they went out drinking again right away. Hey, you're only young once, right? I say, if they can hack it, let them at it. <laughs> Interesting. Let's go talk somewhere else. Looks like our hunch was on the Mora. These newcomers are very suspicious. Drinking in Liyue Harbor, huh? <laughs> Some cover story. I'll wager they've been going to intelligence updates. Good thing it rained today. It means they'll leave footprints. I doubt they'd give themselves away that easily, but let's follow them and try our luck. Just as I thought, they didn't go to Liyue Harbor, they went that way. <laughs> the footprints stop here. But, judging from the direction, I'm guessing their destination was that abandoned house.
Looks like we were too late. This has got to be where the newcomers rendezvous with whoever they're working for. But all the evidence has been destroyed. Look at these ashes. Someone was burning documents not long before we arrived. Could there be anything left? Maybe the wind could have blown the fire out before everything was finished burning. The odds of that are very slim. It's practically impossible. I've checked. All the paper's been burned. There's only ash left now. Why don't we wait for them back at the Black Cliff Forge? They've got to go back there sooner or later. We can't count on that. Clearly they were based here at one point, but it's mysteriously abandoned now. To me, that says that whoever's behind this has moved them somewhere else to throw our investigation off course. Darn! Guess this is where our trail runs cold. Make no mistake, the purpose of our trip wasn't to find any solid evidence. We just need to figure out who's behind Jur E. I smelled something peculiar the moment I came in. Those newcomers probably thought they'd be safe as long as they burned the letters. But what they failed to consider is that paper and ink from different regions produce different odors when they're burned. Really? Pilot can't smell anything. Do you smell anything? There is a certain place with a freezing cold climate where there's nothing but ice as far as the eye can see. Some wealthy people there put floral fragrance in their ink as a way of injecting a little romance into their writing. When that fragrant ink is burned, this is the exact odor that it leaves behind. Exactly. The evidence will soon be blown away by the wind, so it's nothing we can arrest anyone with. But it's all I need. Now I know who we're dealing with. I can plan our next move. Lady Yelon! Oh, thank goodness I finally found you. I thought I'd never see you again. Um, who are you? Don't be alarmed. This is Upei. He's Wen Yuan and Shang Hua's colleague. I sent him to look into Jur Yi's regular contacts. Since Jur Yi likes fishing, Upei thought he might know some of the fishermen and sailors, so he took a boat out to sea to ask around. I left him a note at Yan Shang Tea House telling him to look for me at Black Cliff Forge when he got back. If there had been an ambush waiting for us there, it means we'd have had some backup. So, what did you find out at sea? Uh, forgive my incompetence. I'm afraid I've come up empty-handed. I asked all the fishermen multiple times, but none of them had any interactions with Jury before. Then the waves got so choppy I ended up falling overboard. Fortunately, someone managed to drag me out. When I got back, I heard that you'd gone to Black Cliff Forge and might need backup, so I went straight there as fast as I could. Didn't even stop to change my clothes. Hmm. Well, Uncle Tien said that Jur E once bought a recipe from one of the fishermen. Did you hear anything about that at all? What? That's news to me. No, that's not possible. It's absolutely not possible. Lady Yelan, I'm telling you, I spoke to every single fisherman out there, and none of them mentioned anything about a recipe. Interesting. Then I wonder how that even more wonderful fish soup came about. Fish soup? What fish soup? Nothing. Our priority right now is to find a way to get our hands on some solid evidence. Well, any suggestions? Hmm, not a bad idea. Upe, what do you think? Honestly, I've already tried following Jury, but the guy's too cautious. Never meets with anyone suspicious. Okay, so tailing's out. No, we'll still need to tail him. But first, we need to do some groundwork. Groundwork? When you've worked in intelligence for a long time, you'll understand that no one can stay on high alert forever. Especially when he thinks he's about to win. Tomorrow morning, I'll announce his victory at your high pavilion. Take a guess what you think he'll do next. Be sure to arrive on time. You won't want to miss the show. It looks like we're all here. Well then, time for me to announce the results of the assessment process. I won't drone on about the importance of the Tian Shu role. Suffice to say that Uncle Tian entrusted me with the monumentally important task of assessing the candidates. And now, it falls to me to give him a satisfactory answer. All of us here know the score. Don't beat around the bush, just get on with it. 
Chen Wei has many pioneering ideas, but some of his plans are lacking in detail, and he easily gets into testy exchanges with other people. Mingbo is reliable, but not quite ambitious enough, and because of his personality, he struggles to win people over. In contrast, Zhu Yi is evenly balanced across the board and enjoys an excellent reputation in Liyue. After much consideration, I have decided to recommend Zhu Yi to the Liyue Qixing. Uh, what? Oh, uh, congratulations. Thank you. Honestly, I'm a little surprised to hear my name being announced. In my estimation, all three of us are worthy candidates for the Tianshu position. As your competitor, I've become keenly aware of your great talents. Would either of you entertain the possibility of working with me in the future and taking on some of my workload? I'll have to see. Uh, I'm in a bad mood. This is the last thing I want to be thinking about right now. I don't mind. As long as I can help. Okay, well, that's all from me. Zhu Yi, you'll have some preparation to do. It won't be long before you're informed of your official appointment. I hope you will work hard and make Uncle Tian proud. I will live up to the Tian Shu name. On this, you have my word. I should go. I need to pack my things, and then I think a celebratory meal is in order. Would anyone like to join me? Count me out. I'm not in the mood for a celebration. Zhu Yi seems pretty relaxed now. This would be a good time to follow him. Hey, Traveler, tell me something. What exactly does that guy have that I don't? If you can't answer that, I'm not accepting this result. I, uh, also wouldn't mind knowing. Oh no, if we get stuck here, we won't be able to leave! Follow him. Yes, ma'am. We finally got rid of them! Lady Yelan, jury has gone towards Feiyun Slope. Follow him, quickly. So Juri really sided with the Fatui? But Uncle Tian thinks so highly of him! Why would he do this? Difficult to say, but everything should become a lot clearer when we find him. I'm sorry, Lady Yelan. We lost him. He's too good at this. We weren't able to keep following him without being seen. How the heck did he manage to shake Yelan's subordinates? I guess Zhu Yi didn't let his guard down. Still as vigilant as ever. No, Wu Pei says he's much more relaxed than usual. Maybe it's just how he's wired. Perceptive enough to sense when he's being watched. But how? Don't blame yourselves. Let's not forget he was trained by Uncle Tian himself. Evading detection is not an unusual skill for him to have. If I'd asked you to tail Uncle Tian, you'd have ended up at a dead end too. It's fine. So, where did you lose him? Shinyue Kiosk. He only went in briefly. Upe and I were watching outside the whole time. A few moments later, a man dressed in a completely different outfit came out. Upe had a feeling that it was him, but we couldn't get close enough to check without blowing our cover. I figured that if we spooked him, it would undo what we've accomplished today so far. Another option would have been to arrest him there and then. But without any evidence, that would have been meaningless. So I stopped, Upe, and I stayed here to wait for you while that meathead went to ask around in Shinue Kiosk. Good work. The fish didn't take the bait, but that's okay. As long as he's still swimming around, we'll find a way to catch him eventually. The key is figuring out what he's trying to achieve. Let's go to Shinyue Kiosk. Could you explain to me how that works? A guy like him comes in, changes his whole outfit right under your nose, and you don't even ask him about it? Our customers are free to dress however they please. What grounds would I have to question him? <sighs> okay, fair enough, but didn't you think it was just a little bit strange? Well, maybe I did, but it still doesn't give me the right to stop him. Enough. Let's tone this down a little. I'll make this quick. Just one question. 
What did he buy while he was here? Oh, he didn't buy anything. He just picked up a bottle of liquor that he ordered ages ago. A bottle of liquor? Yes, a very strong kind. Fiery, with a rich flavor. Not something the average customer would order. This gentleman ordered it in person from us a long time ago. He was only here today to pick it up. Liquor... and wineware. I see. Let's go. Where to? Shigu Antiques. Hey, Miss Lin Long. Sorry to bother you. Jur E ordered a wineware set from you not long ago, right? We're friends of his. He's been telling us how impressed he is with the quality, considering how affordable it was. So we just had to come and take a look for ourselves. Sure. Which model are you looking for? Um, we don't really know a whole lot about wineware. Let's just go with Jur E's choice. Would you be able to show us the one he bought? Jur E picked up his set not long ago. As a quality imitation of an antique wineware set, it has the look and feel of a luxury item. Just so you're aware, we don't have many of this model left in stock, and now that Mr. Jur E has taken one, I'm afraid it may encourage the price to go up a little. Don't worry, price shouldn't be an issue. I'm sure we can work something out. But I'm just a little hazy on one thing. Did Jur E's wineware set include wine glasses, or...? For this set, the wine glasses are sold separately. Minimum purchase is one glass, maximum is four. Mr. Jur E but two. Okay. Thanks, Lin Long. Seems there's a little more to buying wineware than I first thought. We'll have to mull it over. Well, don't take too long. We could sell out any day now. All right. See you next time. This is turning into a real headache. Uh, I'd just like to point out that we have the self-professed Grand Master of Fieldwork here to thank for being wholly incapable of tailing an ordinary civilian without being seen. It's not like you did any better. My specialty is information trading, okay? I don't have the physical agility. What's your excuse? I... uh... Fair point. Yelan, so has the plan failed? Oh, if we can't figure out where Jerry went, there's not much we can do. But why was he buying liquor at Shinyue Kiosk anyway? To celebrate? If so, it's no ordinary celebration. What do you mean? First of all, Jur E isn't much of a drinker. On some level, he hates alcohol because of what it did to his father. If he was just looking to celebrate by himself, he wouldn't spend his meager savings on an expensive bottle of alcohol, let alone buy a pair of special wine glasses. No, this is a victory feast, held in honor of Jur E's private sponsor. Whoever this person is clearly enjoys hard liquor and has a very high status, hence the need for expensive-looking wineware. Now where might we find Fatui who match that description, I wonder? Fatui officials... Hmm, should be either the Snezhnyan Embassy or the Northland Bank. Have both locations surrounded. Take as many people as you need. Lady Yelan, is it time for us to make our move? If so, you can count me in. Get with the program, would you? This is a covert surveillance operation. Jury may be vigilant, but that doesn't mean the same is true for his drinking buddy. In which case, we don't need to change tactics. Just change who we're following. Great idea! So we just need to find out who Juri bought that liquor for and follow them instead! But Lady Yelan, if we get caught, this could become a major diplomatic incident. I'm well aware, but don't you see? Jur E is gambling everything on this. If we really want to catch him, we're going to have to accept a little risk ourselves. Stick to your orders, and make sure we're covering all other bases too. Anywhere else Jur E might be going. I want eyes on those locations. Yes, ma'am. Don't worry, Lady Yelan. Jur E may be a slippery character, but we'll keep a close watch on the movements of all Fatui officials. I'll be waiting for you at the tea house. If I'm guessing correctly, Fatui officials are likely to take action at night. You should go and get ready, then meet me at Yensheng Tea House.
Perfect timing. When Yuan just sent word that the Fatui ambassador, Yusupov, just left the embassy alone. He's heading in the direction of Qingxu Pool. Qingxu Pool? That's the place Jerry mentioned in his manifesto! It looks like that's where they've arranged to meet. Sensible choice, I'll give them that. Qingxu Pool is always crawling with monsters. Most people wouldn't dream of going there. It's one place they won't need to worry about being seen. Oh no, we gotta go get them! Let's go. If my hunch is correct, we just might hit the jackpot this time. This is Qingxu Pool, full of ruins, crawling with monsters. Anyone with any sense steers well clear of this place. I've looked into the place before. There's a worker's entrance somewhere around here. Follow me. There's been some work done on this place in the past, but it's a bit of a labyrinth inside. I can't guarantee we'll be safe once we're underground. The workers left an emergency access route. If we can find it, this will be a much easier journey. Still, be ready to fight at any moment. Any resistance needs to be taken out quickly and quietly. We don't want to attract too much attention. Don't worry, we're all professionals here. By the way, Yelan, where are your three little helpers at? They have other things to take care of first. We couldn't afford to wait for them, but they'll join us later. Quietly now. Hold the line. As I expected, but this shouldn't be too much trouble. This is the construction worker's emergency access route, but it's closed tight. Trying to break through would be risky. Let's see if we can find another way. Here we go. Time for takeoff. Sakura swirl.
Take it easy. The waters flowed into the groove, and now the statues have lit up. Okay, now we should be able to move the statues. We should be nearly at the bottom now. Let's wrap this up. Quietly now. Brace yourself. Think you can get away? Whirling snow! Rust and rebuild! Take flight! Coming, Sancho Art! So many! Take it easy. Mmm. I can tell from the aroma that this is very fine liquor indeed. I'm impressed. Come on, bottoms up. Uh, after you, of course. <coughs> oh, sorry, that went down the wrong way. I've never drunk anything this strong before. It'll take me some getting used to. <laughs> You'll get there. If you want to stay friends with us, you have to drink with us. <coughs> I'll do my best. You're more of a lightweight than I thought. Already struggling after one glass? <laughs> I thought you were made of sterner stuff. You certainly kept it together when you were poisoning your teacher's soup. Come on, another round. Less talking, more drinking. <laughs> sure. You didn't leave me much of a choice, though, did you? Just the mention of poisoning sends shivers down my spine. 
I'm more timid than you realize. Every time I poisoned him, I had to hide away at home for a few days because I was so scared of getting caught. Look, I know it has not been easy for you, my friend. We appreciate all your hard work. But oh, I have to say, you really are quite a genius at poisoning people. I mean, the poison we brought from Snezhnaya is as strong as this wine, but you found a way to turn it into an imperceptible, slow-acting poison and came up with the idea of delivering it through fish soup. Uh, what was it you said? Uh, oh, yeah. You said the soup's fishy flavor neutralizes the pungency of the poison, and this process even makes the soup tastier as a result. How did you think of that? It struck me one day when I was fishing. I'm lucky it did. Otherwise, I'm not sure I would have been able to fool Uncle Tien. You have performed excellently. The Fatui will continue to provide the support you need to consolidate your position as Tian Shu. Of course, this is as long as you continue to do as we instruct. Aside from Ching Shu Pool, we also have some other requests for you, which we will inform you of in due course. Don't worry. Whatever tasks you have for me, I will perform them diligently. Did you hear that? It was poison! That's why Uncle Tian hasn't been feeling well recently. It's all Juryi's doing. What a nasty guy! Seize him! Hold on. Did you bring a camera? If not, you can use mine. This is quite a scene. We have to capture it for posterity. Excellent liquor. We've, uh, seen no progress on the diplomatic front, and everyone has been eyeing up the treasure of Qingxu Pool. It's been a real headache for me. But soon, everything will be taken care of, and I can report back on a successful mission. Thank you, Juryi. Ah, uh, I remember when I first saw you. I knew right away that you would make a good partner for us. Hey, do you still remember what I said to you? How could I forget? You said a lowly commoner like me could never be seen as a serious candidate for the Tianshu, no matter how hard I work. The only way is for you to shine bright in the Tianshu's darkest moment. I think you were absolutely right. Yes. Under normal circumstances, the gap between you and other people could only ever grow wider over time. Just look at your two competitors. Chen Wei had wealth. Ming Bo had reputation. But you? You had nothing. You were just another nobody. And that's why I decided to help you. You know, there's an old saying in the Fatui. Give a starving dog a bone, and it'll guard your home for the rest of its life. Yes, I cannot thank you enough for your generous support. <laughs> uh, you know, the best thing about you is that you do as you're told without complaining. Hey, keep up the good work, and I can assure you, you'll never have to worry about Mora again. Uh, heck, when you're not in the company of the Fatui, You'll be able to throw your weight around as much as you want. How about that? Uncle Gao said that Jur E has low self-esteem. Seems he was right. He was worried that whatever advantage he might have now will diminish over time, so the Fatui persuaded him that he should act while he can. Do you have any more film in the camera? Then get ready to use it. Tonight's grand finale should be coming up any minute now. How well this goes for us depends on how Jur E plays his hand. Ooh, is there any more alcohol? Hmm, go on, fill me up. I'm in a good mood today, and I'm gonna drink my fill. Hmm, make sure to get me home safely afterward. There's only a little left. Here, I'll fill your glass. If you like it, I can bring you some more next time. Mm. Oh. Mm. Whoa, this is the good stuff. 
It is great. Huh? <coughs> what the? Charlie, you, you poisoned my wine? But, but when? You seem surprised, Mr. Yusupov. You, how could you? How could I not? I've sacrificed years of my life studying and reflecting to prepare myself for this position. And in the end, I even had to poison my own teacher. You really think I'd put myself through all that just to become your little puppet? I don't want to bow down to anyone ever again. And that includes you. You imbecile. It's the Fatui who got you to where you are. Do you understand? If I disappear with no explanation, the embassy will come after you. They'll get to the bottom of this. Mark my words. Do you see the haystack in the corner? Underneath it is a pile of explosives. And next door in the dark room are the three undercover agents you sent to infiltrate the Black Cliff Forge. I'm gonna stay here till I see you slip into unconsciousness. Then I'm gonna set this on fire. Once the flames burn through the hay, they'll ignite the explosives, the ruins will collapse, and everything will be buried. What? What do you hope to? I took the liberty of leaving some evidence of your contact with the undercover agents at the Black Cliff Forge. It won't take long for people to join the dots. Two missing person cases will become one as the truth gradually reveals itself. The Fatui planted undercover agents in the Black Cliff Forge to steal their signature ruin grade explosives. Their plan was to blow through the solid floor tiles in the dead of night and seize the treasure of Ching Shu Pool. Ah. <sighs> but things didn't quite go to plan. Mistakes were made that led to the accidental deaths of the entire crew. Faced with the overwhelming evidence, the Embassy won't investigate this any further. In fact, they'll be only too happy to blame it all on a rogue operation by you. It explains why you acted alone, while exonerating the rest of the Embassy of any liability. Of course, none of that will have anything to do with me. When all of this comes to my attention, I'm afraid I'll have no choice but to cancel the Ching Shu Pool redevelopment plan immediately. I guess then, I'll be Tian Shu in my own right, with a clean record and well out of the Fatui's reach. <laughs> Cherry, do you really think you're gonna get away with this? The Fatui has a record of everything. That includes the poison, all interactions between us, even my trip here tonight. After I die, they'll come looking, and they'll get to the bottom of this. A record? Oh, you must mean the one in the hands of your second in command, Theophon? How, how do you know about that? Because when you contacted me, I also made contact with your associates. I have Theophon to thank for providing me with the poison I used on you today. He'll help me tie up all the loose ends. After all, your untimely demise comes with a few perks for him. He has been eyeing your position for a long time now. <sighs> that traitor! <coughs> Chergi, you... Shh, 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 shh. Relax. It's over. After tonight, everyone gets what they want. And anyone else in the know is either my accomplice or about to be taken out of the picture. Sweet dreams, Mr. Yusupov.
I did a little surveying on the way here and found that you'd left yourself three escape routes in case things went south. I have them all surrounded. If you're thinking of trying anything, save yourself the effort. The game's up. We were here the whole time and have pictures of everything. They came out pretty nicely. Wanna see them? The game's up? Forgive me, I'm not quite sure what you're referring to, Miss Yelan. I happened to discover a Fatui operation here, so I approached them on the pretext of joining forces and eventually brought them down from within. If it pleases you, Miss Yelan, I'd be only too happy to have you join me in investigating this matter. This is how you want to play it, huh? Fine. You do you. All we need to do to convict you is establish that the poison in his system is the same as in Uncle Tien's. <sighs> hmm. Nothing else you wanted to add? Let's leave it there then. Time to go. One wrong move and it all comes crashing down. I should have been more careful. You followed him here, didn't you? I was so focused on keeping myself out of sight, I forgot he was a potential liability. Let's talk about this, Yelan. I gave you my word that I would live up to the Tianshu name, and that much I can still guarantee. <laughs> your point being? When I take office, I can guarantee that I will act in your best interests. In fact, all of you here tonight can expect very generous treatment in the future. I don't deny that I used underhanded methods to get here. But given my lowly origins, what other choice did I have? <laughs> you still don't get it, do you? Even now. What do you think? Exactly. Jury. Clever people can always come up with a good excuse. But while you might be able to get other people to believe you, you'll never be able to deceive yourself. There's nothing wrong with wanting to win other people's respect, but when has Uncle Tian ever looked down on you? He was like a teacher and a father to you, but you chose to repay that by poisoning him. Whatever positive goal you may have started out with, you threw it away in that moment. That's enough. I... Of course. What makes this even crueler is that you managed to convince yourself there was no other way. Uncle Tien was always going to give you this opportunity, even if you'd done nothing at all. Out of everyone in the world, he is the one who trusts you the most. So much that he drank your fish soup without doubting you, not for one second. That's enough! <laughs> That's enough. Life is like fishing. It cannot be rushed. Whatever you do, Impatience will accomplish nothing. I was just like you once, desperate to prove myself. Only later did I realize things do not always turn out the way you plan. But you have to keep calm to carry on. You're still young. Be patient, believe in yourself, and don't look outside yourself to prove your value. <laughs> Where's Jury these days? It's been a long time since he last paid me a visit. <laughs> Maybe he's just busy. <laughs> well, next time, if he doesn't bring a pot of piping hot fish soup, don't let him in. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you were thinking about, you'll have plenty of time to mull it over in prison. Oh, I almost forgot. If the Fatui find out what happened today, prison might not turn out to be the safest place for you. Trying to have friends on both sides, it has a way of turning everyone against you. But right now, I have an opportunity for you. Huh? Sorry, things are about to get extremely busy for me. Let's meet at Yenshang Tea House tomorrow morning. I'll have someone remove the explosives. Then, there's someone I have to go and see. Need our help with that? No, it could be dangerous. You should leave this one to the professionals. Don't worry, as long as they're willing to cooperate, this'll be a straightforward deal. 
Get some rest. See you tomorrow. There is now no poison left in his system. But recovery from the damage already done will not happen overnight. Dr. Baiju, is my father going to be... You needn't worry too much. Keep taking the prescribed medicine every day, and a full recovery will take at most two to three years. It's good we caught it in time. A few days later and the toxin would have built up in the internal organs. At that point, things would have been much more serious. How did they successfully secure such a seldom seen poison? It seems the Fatui are extremely resourceful. Unfortunately for them, they were up against us. Uncle Tian will be heading off now. Remember to get plenty of rest and avoid overexerting yourself while you're recovering. Don't worry, I will. Thank you very much. Ah, you're here too? Thank you for all you've done to resolve this situation. I'll have to make some tea in a moment. You simply have to try it. Yes, the exhaustion seems to have gone. My mind is steadily getting clearer again. Luckily, it looks like choosing the Tian Shu's successor is suddenly not such a pressing issue after all. Hey, Yelan! My work is mostly wrapped up, so I thought I'd take a minute to check in here. The assessment process comes to an end here, Uncle Tian. In my opinion, Zhu Yi is not suitable for the position, but Chen Wei and Ming Guo both have potential. You have my gratitude. <sighs> People can change their loyalties easily. I've always known this. But whenever it happens, it's still a dismal experience. Is it just Paimon, or is Uncle Tian not that surprised? <laughs> Don't underestimate Uncle Tian. He wouldn't have appointed me as assessment officer if he hadn't had his doubts about Zhu Yi. Normally, the Yue High Pavilion would be responsible for assessing the candidates. Isn't that right, Uncle Tian? Yes, to be quite honest, I wanted to trust him unreservedly. But I have to be responsible with the position of Tian Shu. When I first met Yuri, I wondered if he had approached me with a hidden agenda. So I secretly investigated him. I concluded that he had no ulterior motives whatsoever. He just saw me as an ordinary fishing friend. In the end, even he changed. But when did it start? I never had any plans to recommend him directly, but I always intended to give him the chance to compete on a level playing field. Family background and fame mean everything to many people, but I don't attach great importance to them. I had no reputation to speak of when I first became Tian Shu. I relied on Ganyu's assistance for all manner of things. What I really admired about Jury was his intelligence and resilience. I have to admit, he's a smart guy, and very cautious. The intel suggests that the Fatui saw him as very low risk, but Jury was still extremely careful with the poisoning. He chose that specific liquor from Shinyue Kiosk because the fiery flavor would mask the bitterness of the poison, and he chose to wait until the Fatui official was drunk and had his guard down before delivering it to him. He also installed a secret compartment in the wine pot he bought to hold the poison. As the amount of liquor went down, he'd shake the pot to release the poison from the compartment into the liquor. Afterwards, we also found he had an antidote on him. Had the Fatui official grown suspicious, Juri would have drunk the poisoned wine himself and then found an opportunity to take the antidote shortly afterwards. But that's still really dangerous. Yes, 
Had he drunk the poisonous wine, he still would have faced serious health consequences despite taking the antidote. He didn't hesitate to put himself in harm's way to achieve his goal. How is Jerry now? Well, I mean, he is sitting in a jail cell. Like Yenfei says, everyone who breaks the law has to pay the price. Still, he's cooperating. He didn't turn down my offer to strike a deal. I'll make sure there are plenty of guards around to keep him safe from anything the Fatui might be planning. A deal? Does this have to do with what you said to him when you arrested him? Yes, Jury's not the one I'm interested in. If he was as far as this went, I'd have handed the case off to my subordinates as soon as I realized. But once the Fatui became involved, things got a whole lot more interesting. I thought I might have the chance to catch a big fish. Well, did you? Almost. Unfortunately, it slipped off the hook at the last second. Uncle Tian? Yeon? What are you talking about? Paimon doesn't understand. Jur E colluded with the Fatui to try and secure the position of Tian Shu. Or, to put it the other way around, the Fatui made an attempt to interfere in the Tian Shu selection process. With Yusupov in our hands and a statement from Jur E, we could afford to continue with a diplomatic offensive. Also, we'd be able to gain control of Theophon, Yusupov's second in command. Then we'd have a pawn in the ranks of the Fatui. Pawns like this can be major assets. They open up all sorts of new options. <laughs> Why else did you think I was investing so much time and effort into this case? So, okay, well, did your plan succeed? We got halfway. The first part went off without a hitch, and we passed all the information on to Lady Ningguang. But when we tried to make contact with Theophan, he was gone, along with all the evidence. Uh, the Fatui must be spying on us. Otherwise, they'd never been able to respond so quickly. I found out from other sources that the Harbinger, Regrader, got involved. The Fatui's main forces aren't concentrated here. Regrader was only treating this as a peripheral concern. It's a pity that Theophon got away, but knowing which Harbingers are still looking at Liyue is something. It gives me a starting point for my next mission. I have to ask, Yelan. Do you have any desire to take over the position of Tianshu yourself? I remember you showed some interest a few days ago at Yenshang Tea House. In my estimation, you are more than competent. Oh, that. <laughs> I was obviously joking. I prefer my current life. There's danger and there's excitement. Although it'd still be a behind-the-scenes role, as Tianshu, I wouldn't have the chance to get involved in anything truly clandestine or face any real danger. <sighs> All right, I'm done here. Time for me to go. I'm heading off again in a few days and I still have to prepare. Where are you off to this time? As you might have guessed. <laughs> It's for me to know and you to find out. But I'm sure if you keep going as you are, getting yourselves involved in other people's business all the time, you're sure to get caught up in another misadventure before too long. Maybe I'll see you the next time danger beckons. Until then, keep your wits about you. A lot of people are watching you for a lot of reasons. If you have any more questions, just ask Uncle Tian. After the recent turn of events, I'd say he owes you one. Wouldn't you?